Well, Amy, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I'm truly thrilled to have you here. I know we've got some great stuff to talk about. Before we get started, why don't you just introduce yourself to the audience and tell us what you do? Yeah, of course. So hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on, Henriette. It's going to be exciting today. So for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Amy Atkinson, and I am the owner of The Femtrepreneur, which is a social and digital marketing consultancy. So yeah, that's me. That's amazing. I know that's why I'm so excited to have you here because we're going to talk all about digital marketing, social media, all the good stuff. And I think everybody is like ready now. If you don't have a pen and paper handy, grab one because you're going to need it. Um, Amy, I think the one thing that I always want to share with the audience is your success story, how you got started in business and how that has kind of transpired to where you are now. What was that make or break moment for you almost? <laughs> So I have grown up with both my parents having their own business. Um, so I have always wanted to have my own business. And I very much was like, what the hell am I going to do it in? I don't know. So what actually prompted me to start was, oh, and God, it's so prevalent right now, people were being made redundant where I was working. There was a huge amount of redundancies. And I just decided to do my well do my own thing but then I also had a bit of a freak out moment so then I did start applying for other jobs and I applied for another job I got offered the job and the guy who offered me the job he said do you know what Amy you are commanding a really high salary for your uh for your age and I thought um <laughs> I've only asked for what I've been on for the past two years so thanks but no thanks but I don't want to work for you if that's really how you feel because he had no idea what my work ethic was like so I was like okay right now's the time bite the bullet start my own thing I know marketing let's do it I love it and um, I knew I didn't want to work with big corporates because I've been there I've done that and I wanted to help small businesses and entrepreneurs really start up their business and put them in the economy rather than feed them back into the big CEO pockets because I know that people do little dances when they <laughs> when their small businesses go as well. So yeah, that's why I started really. That's amazing. And and I love that because I do happy dances all the time as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should. You should to keep the energy and the excitement going. Now let's talk about digital marketing. I think this is a big thing for so many people listening to this and going, yep, okay, digital marketing, we all know about it, but how much do they really know about it? And I think if we kind of explain to them the importance of social media and digital marketing for their business, they might grasp a few things that they never would have thought about before. Yeah, and you know what? Especially now, social media and digital marketing is so, so, so important pretty much all of us now are running our businesses or even working within a business online, whether it's on Zoom like we are now or Microsoft Teams meetings, everything's online. So people are just spending more and more time online. And that is why it's so important because that is where people are spending their time now. And then if you think about digital marketing in general and social media marketing in general, quite often it's actually free. So your website, <clears throat> might have some small costs to get set up you might get someone to help you set it up but that will be your only cost otherwise you can do it yourself um, you can also get free domains so there's lots of options out there for small business owners that are much more cost effective than if you were to put something in an advert or even on tv I mean it's, it's astronomical how much you could spend on that sort of thing um, so it really is good for helping you reach your potential customers for free. And there's so many different channels that you can use. But obviously, that is also the problem that people face. Oh, yes. Is that <laughs> because there's so many to choose from, you don't even know where to start. And then people get overwhelmed. They think that something doesn't work for them. And all of this goes through their head. And I totally understand. And actually, this is where a lot of people... Oh, this is where I help a lot of people 
because one of the most important things when you're building any kind of business is to think about where your customers are. So if your customers are spending time on Instagram, then that's absolutely where you should be spending your time building your business. Um, whereas actually if they're on Snapchat or they're on TikTok or they don't really use social media at all, then there's not really any point or need for you to create anything on social media. So, so yeah, that is the most important thing is really, really understanding who your customer is and where they spend their time. And that will help you kind of narrow down and focus to where you should be spending your time to build your business. Yeah. And I couldn't have said it better myself because this is one of the things that I find when I work with my clients, they come to me completely overwhelmed and say, Oh, but I've tried this already. And I've tried this already. Yeah. And this didn't work. And this didn't work. Didn't get any results with this. It was like, well, it's because you're trying everything. And I think everybody goes through phases like that. I went through a phase like that when I yeah. started my business, yeah. tried absolutely everything, every funnel, every platform, every strategy. Yeah. And then you just go like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I'm not getting any results. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe you're overwhelmed. You try and do too many things, but maybe it's a good thing as well for people to go through a phase like that, to experience that, because let's face it, you learn so much along the way, Yeah. but there's got to be a point where you put a cap on it and say, okay, I think I've stretched myself too thin. What is it that I really need to focus on? And you've said it beautifully. Find out who your ideal client is, where they're hanging out and make that your main focus. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it just takes the overwhelm away so quickly the moment you realize you can do that. And coming back to where you said, oh, I've tried everything, I do everything. I did the same. And I think what an, an element of that was I need every sort of piece of business that I can possibly get in order to make this financially work. Um, but actually what I was doing was putting people off me who, and I, I'm in marketing, I've been in marketing for 12 years and I still did the same that everybody else does. And that I needed the business. So I was like, right, I can, I can help men. I can help women. I can, I can help this industry. I can help that industry. But actually, if you really narrow down and focus, you create the content that is specifically for your ideal customer. You'll see so much more of that customer coming through. You'll start to enjoy social media more. You'll start to enjoy probably your business more because yeah. you're less stressed about where the next paycheck's coming from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think this is one of the biggest things for the audience, for you listening or watching this video, it is so important to understand who your ideal client is. You might have heard so many other people saying it, you might have heard me saying it time and time again. There's mm -hmm. a reason for it. It's because it is important. And as soon as you kind of figure out who your ideal client is, everything else just starts kind of falling into place. The strategy, the platforms that you need to use, yeah. everything just starts revealing itself to you. And you're like, how come I've never seen this before? <laughs> Honestly, it makes a huge difference. So as Amy is saying, figure out who your ICA is and just zone in, focus, follow that stream, go down that stream, get everything in place. But more importantly, use digital marketing, use social media. Um, I think that's partly why I enjoy working with women in the service-based industry because women, women, well, people in particular who wants to sell products, there's an expense to that because either you've got to buy a product on yeah. in order to sell it, or there's there got to be some kind of investment upfront first before you can sell the product. But with services, there's no real investment that you've got to make upfront apart from investing in yourself. And then obviously having a couple of expenses on platforms, which is a module of the cost, what it would cost in order to have a business in products. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It just, it just makes sense in so many different ways. Talk to us a little bit about the basics of setting up social media, um, social media profiles, so to speak, because there's so many profiles out there. Every single social media platform has got its own rules, its own strategies, its own algorithms, et cetera, et cetera. And we can go on for hours about that. But talk to us about the importance of setting up that profile. Why is it so important to have the right profile for the right platform? Yeah, and I think, you know what, the, the most important thing with any social media channel is to make sure that you've got a business profile as opposed to a personal profile. The benefits of that is 
really to give you the insights and the understanding as to what's working for you and what's not. And this is where you can be really strategic and understand what's working for you and really nail down. And again, you're focusing, focus on what is working for you. So yes, you might be trying out different content. You might be putting videos up with Instagram reels or Instagram TVs or Facebook lives. There's so many different options out there, but ultimately it's really helpful to you to know what your customer is enjoying and what they're engaging with. And you can't get that level of detail on a personal profile, but you can on a business profile. So that's the first thing. Make sure that it's a business profile. And then the second thing is on your bio. So no matter what platform you're using, make sure you're really clear about who you help, how you can help them and why they should come to you. So what makes you different? And again, it's really understanding your customer to in order to really write that and write it succinctly as well so when somebody lands on your profile whether it's facebook pinterest or instagram wherever it is linkedin they know straight away oh yep i fit into that category oh yes i need that solution and oh brilliant this person i've not seen do that before or i've not seen anybody else do that before so i need to engage with them and then the last thing is to set up what I call a, it's a link tree account. Mm -hmm. There's loads of other options out there other than link tree, but I think that it's so helpful for you to then have all of your interesting bits of content on a link tree account. So for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's basically one link and it's a small link, short friendly URL that you can put into your profiles. And you can then share all of that information. So whether you've got a freebie or whether you've got, obviously you've got your website or perhaps you've got a, a workshop coming up or a product you're trying to push or all of these different things, you can then put them in a real simple format on your Linktree profile, but you only have to share one link and it just makes your life so much easier from an admin perspective. Yeah, I, I know. In the beginning, when I opened up my Instagram account, because we all know Instagram only allows you to have one URL in your bio. Yeah. And I stupidly went to change it every time I had a call to action. And that was almost like every single day because I had a post going out every single day with a new call to action. I was like, there's got to be an easier way. Mm -hmm. And then I saw somebody else talking about Linktree and I was like, what's that? How does that work? And I started exploring. I was like, oh, the heavens just opened up. And I thought, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I am a huge supporter of Linktree. I use yeah. them. I think it's great. Um, but I, what I like about it is you don't just have to use them for Instagram. You can use it on your Facebook business page. You can use it, oh my gosh, anywhere on any kind of yeah. social media profile. Yeah. And it's just, it's so simple and so user-friendly from both your point of view, but also your customer's point of view. So if you're, if you've put something up on your stories and link LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram all now have that option to use stories, or if you put something as a post and you don't want to embed it into the actual post because you've created something else, whether it's a GIF or blah, 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 because there's limitations to the posts that we put up you can then just direct people to your the link in your bio and they can then go down the list of buttons that you've created and find the one that's that you've been talking about and that's right for them yeah absolutely and i like that as well because i can depending on what project i've got going on at that moment in time i can go and change those buttons and yeah. you can have as many buttons as you want. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just, for those of you who's watching this um, on camera now, I'm just quickly going to go and grab it. If you don't know what Linktree is, then you can at least get an idea. Um, so just bear with me a second. Yeah. And um, again, if you're not watching the video, you can go on to my Instagram profile, which is at the Femtrepreneur, and you'll see my Linktree there. So that's easy for you to go and have a look as well if you're listening on the podcast as opposed to watching the video. Yeah, absolutely. So it's so there we go. So if you guys can see that, I hope you can. That's what it is. All it is is just a couple of little buttons. And then once you click on the button, so say for instance, you want to go and listen to my latest podcast episode, 
you're going to click on it and eventually it should take <laughs> you there. I think it should. Yeah, I mean, yep, it should there do. It, goes. <laughs> it, it should do. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit slow. But, but that's the idea. And I think that's what makes it so important. But setting up your, your social media profiles is really important because let's face it, if you have any kind of post going out there and somebody discovers your post for the first time and they really resonate with that, they're going to go, oh, who is this person? Let me mm -hmm. see who they are. What do they do? So what do they do? They're going to check out your profile. Yeah. And I see that time and time again, if I look at any of my insights, if I put up a post, I can see straight away what people are doing with all of your insights, which is all in, in Instagram or on Facebook. And they always, the next thing they do, I'd say 80% of the people that come across my posts organically, the first thing they do is go and check my bio out. So that helps you then understand, okay, is my bio working for me? Is what I've written working for me? Is the content working for the same person? Why are they not following me? All of these questions can come up and it just hugely helps you in the long run to focus. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is what I talk about client attraction because what you're putting there in your bio is attracting that potential client. Now, I'm not saying in an attraction where they go like, here's my money, I want to work with you immediately. It attracts yeah. interest where they go, I really like what she's saying. I really like what she's doing. I like the way she's working. Let me yeah. go and take the next step. Click on one of the links on Linktree. Sign up for a freebie. Go and check out your website, podcast episode, all those kind of things. It's, it's more about getting them to take that next step to get more familiar with you and then establish that relationship. <laughs> where they can get more comfortable with who you are, which yeah. then eventually, if they really want that, to take them to the next step to, to work with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also really important to note because I get a lot of clients come to me saying, oh, social media doesn't work for me. And it's because we are, we just want things right now as yeah. human beings and we want to see our work cut out for ourselves and it's done and it's mm -hmm. done and it's successful. But actually what's really important, if you think about even just your own behavior on digital, on digital marketing and social media, you're properly thumb scrolling. You don't stop unless something really grabs your attention or perhaps you've seen that brand before. So if you think that your customers are part of that, and actually people need to engage or see your brand anything between 12 and 20 times, before they even buy from you. Mm -hmm. So this is where social media can hugely help you because that means it might speed up the process because it might be 20 days and you post once a day, but obviously it all depends on the algorithms and whether <laughs> you're going to get in front of them every single time, but it just helps you speed up that process. So always have in the back of your head that this potential customer has to engage with me 12 to 20 times before they're going to buy. Yeah. And when we talk about engaging, we're not just talking about liking. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a big thing. So I get so many clients who say like, oh, so I put up a post and I got a few likes from it. It's like liking is one thing. Proper uh -huh. engagement is another thing, getting them to communicate with you, getting them to leave messages, getting them to send you a DM. That is proper engagement. And that's got to be the main aim for you to go for. Yeah. And there's no harm in creating that engagement either. If you see, so for example, I see on some of my posts that I get similar sorts of people liking everything I do, but they haven't taken that next step to DM me or comment on any of my pictures. I then literally send them a message just to thank them. And that then starts it. It opens up that conversation for them to eventually have a conversation when they're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that because we're, we're so much about as human beings, we're so much about what can I get? How many likes can I get? How many of this can I get? But I like your approach of swinging that around and going and giving and saying, Hey, thank you so much for liking all my posts or, you know, commenting on this. And I think that is very good because that just shows that it's not always about getting it's about yeah. giving as well. And yeah. there's got to be that balance. So I like that approach very, very much. Yeah, definitely. You've got to, I think it's so important for customer relationships really to properly engage back with your audience. Mm. You, if you see someone has liked your post for the past, I don't know, three days even, 
clearly they like what you're doing, but maybe they're a bit shy or maybe they're not quite ready to work with you yet. But you can, again, you can speed up that process by building that relationship with them outside of any posts that you put up. Mm. But, you know, on the other side is true. What you're saying is that it does take time. And I always use this example. It's like a tiny little seed you're going to plant. You know, it's underneath the soil. You don't see anything happening because it's under the soil, but you have a sincere belief that with the sunshine, with the water, you know, with, with nature taking over, it's growing. It's starting to sprout underneath the soil. And yeah, maybe nothing is happening, but it will eventually. It's keeping that faith really that things are working. And then one day you'll see the little sprouts coming out. You'll see the first little leaf sticking out. And that's where you go excited and go like, oh my gosh, it's working. People are yeah. engaging with me. It's the same yeah. principle. It's yeah. just about believing that what you're doing is things that are happening underneath the soil. You can't see it yet. But one yeah. day it will spark. It will bring that engagement. You just got to keep persistent with it. Yeah. Oh God. Consistency is so important. And I think that the moment you stop being consistent, it's actually more damaging to yeah. you for the one, two, three, twenty 20 people that do regularly engage with what you're doing. Because from the outside point of view, they forget about you. Again, it's a digital world where so it's like fashion nowadays to be busy <laughs> everyone's so busy so they're going to easily forget about you unless it's a friend's business in which case you might then only remember them because you're having a conversation with them so it is so important to be consistent yeah absolutely i always talk about the three c's start with clarity then yeah. commitment and then consistency yeah, and those three, you can honestly make anything happen, but you have yeah. to put all three in place in order to make use of it. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm happy to share my story with my social media and with the, my podcasts. I've had my podcast now since 2018. Um, and it's probably only gained traction in the past four months, I would say. So that's taken a good year and a half. And I will, again, I wasn't consistent. I didn't tell people about it. All of these kinds of things, if you are consistently doing it, you're consistently telling people about it, you will see growth. And that is, it's just important to have the faith and the belief in all of those things. Yeah, exactly. And um, I, I love the, your example about the podcast because I had a similar experience as well. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about that on another day. <laughs> I would like to know, moving a little bit away from social media, let's mm -hmm. talk about SEO because yes. almost everybody these days can either create their own website, have a website or get somebody to do a website for them. But mm -hmm. I think SEO is one of those kind of things that makes all of our brain aches. <laughs> <laughs> including me it's fine <laughs> talk to us about just the basics of seo and how important it is for 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 you to have as a business owner yeah so what the first thing i would say with seo is that the rules do change quite regularly mm. so definitely keep up to date with somebody that you trust whether that's myself or whether that's somebody else who has a podcast who regularly updates on seo definitely keep up to date don't get overwhelmed by going to every single article that you can find online because you'll spend hours and hours and hours sifting through information. Um, but at the time of this recording, and we're, we're now November 2020, what a year, um, what's important is they, they separate SEO out now by off-page SEO, on-page SEO, and technical SEO. So the technical SEO, some bits and pieces are quite easy for people to do themselves. So for example, if within your platform or whatever CMS system you've decided to use, as long as you're able to edit the URL so it's not XYZ, ABC, mm -hmm. 123, make sure that your URLs are user-friendly and they use the keywords that you want to use. So for anyone that doesn't know about keywords, they are words that your customers are searching for on Google or Bing or whatever search platform. 
Um, so try and use those as much as you can without sort of vomiting those keywords everywhere <laughs> in, your, in your website. Um, the next thing is to make sure that you've got an SSL security certificate. Yes. So nowadays, a lot of us are collecting data, whether it's through our newsletters or anything like that. All of that needs to be protected, especially with GDPR and all of this kind of stuff. But if you've got an SSL certificate, again, Google this, you'll be able to find it quite easily or in your hosting provider, they'll probably have a option for you to add it there at the moment they're only about 50 or so pounds depending on who your hosting provider is so they're not expensive for the year but google makes sure that they provide or they put forward the most safe website so that is something that's super important and then the uh, so they're kind of the two main technical bits and pieces that will hugely help you then with your on-page SEO, it's optimizing your page titles and your meta descriptions. So if you don't build your own website, this might be going straight over your head, the words that I'm using here. But make sure that you can fill in as much as you possibly can into your back-end system. And you probably will see H1 tags and page titles and meta descriptions as a header for the areas that you need to fill in. So definitely make sure that you're including your keywords in those. You're using the character limit limits in those as mm -hmm. well. So don't ever leave anything blank because all of this helps you with your SEO. Um, and make sure when you're writing your headings to not just put it in like a user friendly way, but to also include your keywords where you possibly can. Um, so other bits, of, oh, then another really important thing, sorry, just came to my head, is images. Whenever you upload an image, where, you know if you go on a website and you can hover over the top of the website and you've hovered over an image, it comes up with like a little phrase, and that is called an alt tag. And basically the whole point in an alt tag is for anybody who's visually impaired, they can hover over that and actually see, well, they won't see, but they can understand then what that image is. So again, it's all about customer experience and it again will help you with your SEO because Google will be like, this website's doing the right thing for every type of customer. So that will help you. Um, and then off-page CEO, oh, CEO, SEO, <laughs> is obviously your social media. We've talked about that already. And also something called link building. Mm. So link building is where you might work with different suppliers or you might work with different, I'm, I'm going to say customers because if, if you're a business to business business, mouthful, <laughs> then it's good for you to work with your customers and they can link back to you, you can link back to them. And that is essentially what link building is. And it just grows your trust mm -hmm. in the eyes of Google. So they're kind of my six main points. When it comes to SEO. Oh, I love it. It's actually so funny. As you were talking, it's sort of, I was looking at my website going, yup, yup, tick, tick. Oh, there's something there that I haven't thought about. But it's, it's really good because I think, you know, um, one of the things that I fairly quickly learned because I built my own website and I'm using it only because I'm a bit of a techie freak and I love doing it. But um, one of the things that I quickly realized is when I started launching my podcast episodes, it automatically went so Henrietta Nell forward uh, Henrietta forward slash episode one. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But then I quickly realized that everybody else has got an episode one. Everybody else has got an episode 20. So yeah. I quickly changed that to the titles, which was the key word that I was using. And then within the content of that um, podcast, I made sure that I used the keywords there as well. So yeah. that is the one thing that stood out for me. Yeah. Um, another thing that stood out for me is when you were talking about the, um, the metadata, metadata, now I can't even say it, 
Well, you were talking about that. The first time I heard about it, I was like, no clue. What on earth is that? Again, being a techie freak, I started doing the research and I was like, oh, that's fine. I can do that. So I did it. And it's just all of these little things about making sure that your website is SEO friendly. But I think one of the most important things is the security, the, yeah. the SSL security. Um, because I find now, and, and when we talk about the SSL security, what it is, is you might have seen that if you go onto websites, it starts with HTTP or yeah. HTTPS. Yeah. When you've got the S at the end of HTTP, it means it's secure. And I sometimes go onto websites where it's a website I know, I've always been on there, but now when I go onto it and it's only HTTP, there's a little pop-up on the side where it says, might not be secure. Mm -hmm. And I find, why is it not secure? It's like, ah, it doesn't have the SSL security. Yeah. So yeah. yes, it is a little bit of an extra expense to have that but it shows that your website is secure. It immediately um, you know, kind of rewards you yeah. for being safe. If you're collecting data in particular, no matter where you are in the world, GDPR will affect you. And we can talk about that for ages as well, but you need to show that you are secure, that you are trustworthy, and that will rank you higher on Google. Just, yeah. just making those little tweaks that Amy yeah. said here is gonna do you such good. Yeah, and, and they are, I know to anyone who doesn't understand it necessarily that those things might sound really overwhelming and quite daunting, but actually when you take it step by step, so even if you pause this podcast and then come back to step two, pause the podcast, come back to step three, you'll actually realise once you've done it a couple of times, mm. you totally will get the hang of it and it will become second nature and it actually won't be too much of an issue. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is the, what you exactly said that that took me a couple of years to put together. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to give everybody who's listening a little bit of a tip. So if you have a, a website on WordPress, they've got a, a free plugin that you can use to help you with SEO. So obviously you can pay, use the paid version, but the free version is absolutely amazing. It's called Yoast SEO. You use it as well? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So it's a free plugin. You just download it, connect it to your website. And then whenever you read, uh, write any blogs or you have any articles or things going out, the little pop-up at the bottom will just show you if your SEO is good, if your word count is good and all of those kind of things. And it just gives you all of these green stars to say, yes, you've done it. Or, or no, you might need to work on a little couple more things. And it's brilliant. It helped me sharpen up what I do for my website for SEO. Yeah. So if you want to make a star just on that, it's free just you yeah. know download it but it, it I'm, as far as i know it only works with uh, wordpress at this moment yes yeah it does only work with wordpress at the moment and that's because all of the other different platforms they've got their own people or affiliates that they prefer to work with so but yoast is brilliant and it also gives you a readability score yes and the readability score is basically f how it reads from a customer point of view so yes you can pop in your keywords left right and center but actually if it doesn't read well to a customer then that won't help you either with your seo so you need to make sure that you're at least an amber or an orange whatever color you want to go with but go for the green <laughs> It's quite kind of fun as well. Every time I do a new post, I'm like, is it going to show green? Yes, yes, it does. Oh no, it's orange. What have I done wrong? What do I need to change? So it kind of becomes this little challenge every time to have both the SEO and the readability, both green, having the green lights pop up. So yeah, it's quite fun. So yeah, go and try it out. There's a little tip there for you as well. But I think what Amy is saying, if you just take the tips that Amy is saying here, those six kind of options in order to have the basic SEO in place, you will see a huge difference on your website as well. So by all means, just go and try it out. Yeah, definitely. Did you want me to just summarize those to help? Yes, please. People? That would be amazing if you can. Yeah, of course. So the first thing is use proper URLs. So user-friendly URLs. The second thing is your SSL security certificate. Make sure you've got that. The third thing is fill in your page titles and meta descriptions. The fourth thing is to name all of your images. So create your alt tags. The fifth thing is link building. And the sixth thing is be consistent with your social media. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much for putting that out there. Oh my gosh, Amy, I just wanted to say thank you so much. This has been absolutely so valuable just having you here talking to us about social media, SEO, digital marketing. I mean, it all comes back together. It's just a full circle almost. Yeah. Before we go though, you've got free workshops that you do every now and then for the audience. And if you don't know Amy, if you've never seen Amy do a workshop, I have, she does amazing workshops. <laughs> So by all means, I would highly recommend that you go and sign up for one of her workshops and go and see what she's got to say there. I think, honestly, Amy, I can say that your workshops are so detailed. You give away so much information in these workshops that every time I've just seen you present something, I've learned something. And actually, I still have some notes here of a, of a workshop <laughs> you've done before that I'm still looking at and going, Google Keyword Planner, SEO. <laughs> So honestly, I would highly recommend that you go and sign up for one of Amy's workshops. Trust me, you are not going to regret it. But Amy, just talk to us a little bit about the workshops, what they can expect from it. Yeah, of course. So I do two a month, one on Instagram and one on Facebook. Sometimes if I'm at capacity, then I'll do more. But the one on Instagram is helping you get your Instagram set up properly. And I go through all of the latest features, how to use them, what to use them for, the sort of content that you can put up there. Um, and then with Facebook, I go through the latest algorithms because a lot of people that come to me, they know how to use Facebook with, you know, it's been around for a long time now, but they want to see it actually working. So I go through the latest Facebook algorithm changes and then the sort of content that you should be producing in order to make sure that you're hitting all of those rules around the algorithms. So that's what you'll get. Amazing. And, and I'm looking forward to it because I want to go back and sign up for more of your workshops um, and see what you've got to say. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's one of those continuous things. You just got to stay up with the changes. You yeah. just got to keep up with it. So by all means, sign up for these workshops. Um, and Amy will obviously provide the latest information that you require at that moment in time. But my suggestion is, why don't you go and sign up for it now? There's a link below in the show notes. Go and click on that. It will take you to a page where you can obviously go and sign up for Amy's workshop. And yeah, and just go and, you know, follow Amy on Instagram. Her Instagram link is there as well. And any other, um, I think we're going to put your website there as well, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you put my website there, yes. it's got all the latest freebies that I'm giving away. Awesome. So. awesome. so her Instagram and her website will be below in the show notes. But above all else, go and sign up for her workshop because you are going to love it. But Amy, thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you your time being me. here. It was so much fun having this it chat. I, I honestly, I love talking on podcasts. It's I know. Fun. I know. You and I said before we record, we said, we're, gosh, we can talk for hours on this. And I'm thinking, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> Anyway, listen, have a lovely day and we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you again. Take care. Bye. Bye.